Hi, this is Annie Batticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Sagittarius for December 2013. So if Sag is your sun sign or Sag is your rising sign, then this is for you. Definitely check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, if you're interested in a personal birthday reading or a holiday reading or a New Year's reading. Awesome, awesome time to do that. Um, and you'll definitely leave this session with more clarity, understanding, and a plan to create your best year ever, because that is my department. And if you want to learn astrology, then check out my obscenely low-priced astrology series online and sign up for my free newsletter, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Okay, so what's up for Sedge for birthday month for most of us? If you haven't had your birthday already in November, then... It's your birthday in December, and you know it's also my birthday in December, and I get very excited. So, it's time for birthday wishes. Birthday wishes are um, astrologically based, and when the sun is in the, in the sky is aligned with the sun in your chart, the sun being the representative of what you want, then there's a magical portal open for universal receptivity to your desires. So do your birthday wishes. Ten birthday wishes out loud and written down. I want this. I want that. Some pointers on, on putting together the best list. Please do not ask for something someone else has specifically, like their boyfriend. No bueno. <laughs> that is not a good thing to do. I have had many people... Um, trying to learn, including myself over many years, how do you wish for something? You know, how do you wish for something in a way that's free of karma? So we don't covet the things that other people have that would require them to lose it in order for us to have it. You find the essence of what your friend's boyfriend has. Maybe he is smart and funny and charming. Um, maybe he pays really awesome uh, attention to her and is very devoted to her. And so those essences of what he carries... Bring those into your wishes. Bring essence as much into your wishes as possible. So to have the experience of mutual fulfillment in a relationship, to have the experience of money being easy um, and relationships with money being easy and fun. You know, so the best that you can find in essence behind something, the universe has more ways to fill that request and something very specific like I want that specific exact red car on that lot in that state or whatever um, it's going to be harder for the universe to fill fulfill that request so um, do your birthday wishes I've seen many birthday wishes come true within 24 hours I can't make any promises there's so much that um, can be affecting that but do it I'm excited about it I hope you're excited about it too so what else is up for um, Sag in December? We have a new moon in our sign. Whenever you have a new moon in your sign, it really, really, really enhances your personal power. Um, so hopefully you feel really, really on fire. And so the new moon's open portals. And this, the solar new moon happens in Sag's first house of, of self, of how you see yourself, of how other people see you. So any redefinition of self or identity um, that you have been working on, maybe you before have told the story of, I'm a person that works really hard and doesn't have that much to show for it. Well, that's a story to stop telling for sure. But things like that are really good things to wish for. By the way, you also get new moon wishes. <laughs> it's just wish, it's a wishing frenzy. So you get 10 new moon wishes to say out loud and write down. You have 10 birthday wishes. If your birthday is near the new moon, which is December 3rd, within a couple of days in either direction, then all of your wishes are supercharged. So definitely be thinking about your wishes. And if you're listening to this in November and it's not December yet, then take all the time that you can to try to fine-tune your wish list so that you really, really, really um, can ask for the things you want. You can also supercharge your wish list either at new moon or in this every month at the new moon or on your birthday with a vision board. Images that carry the essence of what you want, making them the, on those power days, has, um, carries more energy for creation. So that's going on. Um, there's all kinds of things going on for better or possibly worse in the December chart um, in general. I'm going to go over some other things. Um, okay, so we talked about the new moon. The full moon is going to happen in the Sag house of relationship. 
So if you pay attention to your emotional cycles throughout the month, you may notice that 24, 48 hours up until the new moon, somewhere around that time, you might have an emotional freak out every month. I do. I have an emotional moment that I'm like, wow, this is totally not like me, but it's happening again. It happens every month about 48 hours before the new moon. So you can pretty much guarantee wherever you are in the world that I am wherever I am in, at, at that time having a moment. And I am not the only one because we are very much ruled by the moon because we are so much water. It's really empowering to start to notice your relationship with these moon cycles because the more you can really tap into your personal connection with the planetary cycles, the more you can start to feel out the rhythms and respond to them. So this fullness will occur in the house of relationships. And this can be any personal important relationship with a client, with a spouse, with a romantic partner, um, with a, a significant other that you are co-parenting with or whatever this looks like the middle of the month, there's going to be some fullness that is reached. Now, these things are not necessarily bad. They're not necessarily a conflict or a drama. You could be really emotionally happy and just overwhelmed that you cry with happiness. That, that can also happen at new moons. I mean, at full moons. So, whatever it is, there's going to be fullness in this relationship space. The big story, as has been with Sag for a while and is going to continue to be, is this story of... Um, home versus work. The, the conflictive aspects that are going to happen this month for everybody are going to be stationed in home versus work for Sag Sun and Sag Rising. Um, so, again, this can be a good thing. This can be that you, like in the instance of a certain person I know to remain unnamed for whatever reason, <laughs> who might be having a baby soon, right? Maybe they have way more work in a lot of ways than, um, than they are, um, their growing family is, is making it able to, for them to manage. It's a very distorted sentence, but you know what I'm saying. So in some ways, having your business grow very, very much is not a bad thing. And having your family grow is a wonderful thing. But when you have them both happening at the same time, you have this, these energies at odds with how are you going to manage all of that. And the story for Sagittarius in December is very much going to be like that for, for many of you. Then you add this um, energy about self-sufficiency because Pluto, we've got Pluto, Uranus, and Mars making really mm, challenging aspects to one another. And this is going to be around holiday time. So if you can celebrate with your family and friends before the actual holiday week and then, like, hide under a rock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> holiday week. It's tempting to say that sometimes, but I guess that's not really the way to deal with things. But my point is that there are many harmonious aspects throughout most of December, and that last week around the holidays is going to have these Pluto, Uranus, um, Mars oppositions and squares. So the tensions are going to be running high. So my plan for this, I always like to have a plan. And I can tell you it's not the saggy parts of me that likes to plan. <laughs> it's the Capricorn parts. But in any case, my plan to suggest to you and my plan for myself for these aspects is to release as much stress, pressure, and tension before that week as possible. So for me, I'm doing very deep self-help work and clearing work. Um, a lot of it's centered around a book called Radical Forgiveness by Colin Tipping, which I absolutely love and I totally highly recommend. When you see your family, they're going to be the people that annoy the crap out of you and your family. And this is just very common in most families. Because of the way the aspects are lining up, it could create drama. We want to prevent drama and we know that not everyone in your family is watching this video, although I do recommend that you send it to as many people <laughs> in your family as possible because if everyone knows what's going on, then everyone can be focusing on creating the best family experience ever. So if you know you're going to be going into um, pressure cooker energy, if you keep yourself in a very calm place and do work beforehand to prepare for that, you're more likely to diffuse the energies rather than add to them or um, exacerbate them. So conscious breathing, um, exercising, putting bare feet and hands on the earth, working with radical forgiveness where you radically forgive people in your life who you feel have wronged you and then you step into a different place of 
minimize charge when you're in their presence. Isn't that magical? And the book is not very expensive, but what you can do with it is just profound, and, and I'm really priceless. So consider that. Um, the, the image that I'm giving about the end week in December is to imagine how you feel after a massage. You feel really relaxed. Then if someone aggravates you, you say, oh, I'm not even going to respond to that because I'm so happy and relaxed right now that I'm not even going to mess this up <laughs> because I'm so happy and relaxed. You're not very triggered. But if you have just been traveling all day or you know, around a bunch of ruckus all day and your nerves are frayed, then if someone says something to you or looks at you in the wrong way, and the slightest provocation, never mind an actual genuine provocation, you're more likely to react. You want to try to prevent the reacting as much as possible and promote the responding. Um, one of my favorite authors, Michael Brown, that I talk about all the time, his book, The Presence Process, he says you're either living your life in charge or you're living your life charged, and you're never doing the same at the same time, doing them both at the same time. So you are most in charge and empowered when you are not triggered by the things that other people say and do and the things that are going on in the world. And if you are getting triggered by these things, then you know that there are deep, unintegrated childhood thought perceptions that have to be integrated in order for you to move through life in that way with peace and harmony in your every footstep, in your every breath. So what a, what a lofty goal to try to attain, but hey, you've got lots of birthday and new moon wishes, so you may as well go for it, right? Because peace in the world starts with peace in the individual, and we can never have peace in the world if we don't have peace ourselves. So this is a really great time to practice that principle. Um, I always promise you that I won't tell you about a challenging uh, potential without also offering suggestions as to how to maximize it, and so I've just done that again. <laughs> Some, um, another aspect of this is many of you have post-traumatic stress disorder. Life in general, it can just be traumatizing. And parents, no matter their best efforts, they um, you know, don't always do the best that they would like to do because it's really, really challenging to take care of a child. And so things happen and people take those experiences with them and are debilitated by them. But the more that you can unload those triggers by dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder that's underlying a lot of these problems, then the more free you can be and the more um, deep and intimate and fulfilling your relationships can be. Um, check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Click on Life University, which is my new um, online education um, page, which I am starting. The first course I have posted on there, surprisingly, is not one that I put together myself because I have so much of my own stuff that I have to get on there. But it just happened to be timely in my life that this course called Emotional Mastery by um, amazing practitioner life coach uh, Juniper Clare put together this Emotional Mastery course to help people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And she is brilliant. So check it out. Sign up for the course. You can help yourself and other people with it. Um, and that will definitely help you to be a person that diffuses energy as you walk through a life. That and whatever other post-traumatic stress disorder resources. Another one is EMDR. I can't remember what that stands for, but check out if your counselor or your, in, uh, an ins your insurance covers a counselor or psychologist that does EMDR, because EMDR is awesome for clearing post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's possible that you could be walking around with insurance right now where there's a practitioner that does this amazing practice EMDR that you could be having be covered for. So look into that. So I can't see everything going on in your chart. I would like very much to, if you're interested in a personal reading, contact me at my website. Also, if there has been something of value in this video for you, then share it. Tell everybody. Post it on your Facebook page. Share it on your friends' Facebook pages, your saggy friends, or anyone who's going to see their, their, their family at the holidays because there's some general pieces in here that can help anybody. Post it on Twitter. Send an email a friend. The way that we um, expand consciousness is by expanding consciousness, and consciousness is contagious. So if there's a certain perspective that is expanding and we share that perspective, then we can expand consciousness just from our house or a coffee shop or wherever by sending um, a link to share or something like this. So I hope you do that, and I hope you take good care and have the best December ever.